Welcome to Module 1 of EDU 577, the Internet in Teaching and Learning. By the end of this session, learners will be able to summarize the components and functionality of a computer's hardware and software, compare and contrast web browsers and search engines to investigate their functionality, interface, and design, and finally outline the components and elements of the Internet and its systems. For this course, we will draw heavily from the ISTE standards. They are technology standards geared towards K-12 instruction. Today's students must be prepared to thrive in a constantly evolving technological landscape. The ISTE standards for students are designed to empower student voice and ensure that learning is a student-driven process. We'll use these standards throughout the course to underpin what we do with and for our students. ISTE Standard 1, Empowered Learners. Students leverage technology to take an active role in choosing, achieving, and demonstrating competency and their learning goals, informed by the learning sciences. ISTE Standard 2, Digital Citizen. Students recognize the rights, responsibilities, and opportunities of living, learning, and working in an interconnected digital world, and they act and model in ways that are safe, legal, and ethical. ISTE Standard 3, Knowledge Constructor. Students critically curate a variety of resources using digital tools to construct knowledge, produce creative artifacts, and make meaningful learning experiences for themselves and for others. Number 4, Innovative Designer. Students use a variety of technolo technologies within a design process to identify and solve problems by creating new, useful, and imaginative solutions. Number five, computational thinker. Students develop and employ strategies for understanding and solving problems in ways that leverage the power of technological methods to develop and test solutions. Number six, creative communicator. Students communicate clearly and express themselves creatively for a variety of purposes using the platforms, tools, styles, formats, and digital media appropriate to their goals. And finally, number seven, global collaborator. Students use digital tools to broaden their perspectives and enrich their learning by collaborating with others and working effectively in teams locally and globally. Let's develop some academic language essential to computers. Computer processing unit, or CPU, most commonly known as a central processor, um, is the brains of the computer where most calculations take place. In terms of computing power, the CPU is the most important element of a computer system. Hard drive. A hard drive is the hardware component that stores all your digital content in a permanent state. Your documents, pictures, music, videos, programs, application preferences, and operating system represent digital content stored on the hard drive. They can be both external and internal. RAM or random access memory is the physical hardware inside a computer that temporarily stores data serving as the computer's working memory. Additional RAM allows the computer to work with more information at the same time, which usually has a considerable effect on total system performance. Network. A network consists of two or more computers that are linked in order to share resources, exchange files, or allows electronic communications. The computers on a network may be linked through cables, radio waves, satellites, or infrared light beams. Computers connected to a network are broadly categorized as servers or workstations. Shared network folders. Network sharing enables access to information by more than one person through more than one device at the same or at a different time. By connecting a device to a network, other users and devices in the network can share and exchange information through this network. Peripheral, any of various devices, including sensors, used to enter information and instructions into a computer for storage or processing, and to deliver the processed data to a human operator, or in some cases, a machine, controlled by the computer. Such devices make up the peripheral equipment of modern digital computer systems. Bits, bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, and terabytes are data storage units. For more information, visit the website below. 
Here is a picture of a central processing unit. This small topography map shows how the CPU or processor controls all computer functions such as the monitor, keyboard, modem, printer, hard drive, etc. The motherboard houses the CPU and acts as the nervous system for the computer. It supplies ports and circuits to other computer components or peripherals. BIOS contains all the initial commands at computer startup. Hard drive is the permanent storage for computers. It's typically represented as the C drive on most PC computers. RAM is volatile memory, temporary storage for what resources your computer is currently working on or using. Everything is wiped off at shutdown. Network cable, or sometimes called CAT5 or CAT6, connects computers to other computers or internet. A lot of times you see internet drops on walls. A bit is an electronic signal which is either on, represented by a 1, or off, represented by a 0. It is the smallest unit of information the computer uses. 8 bits equals 1 byte. 1024 bytes equals 1 kilobyte. 1024 kilobytes equals 1 megabyte. 1024 megabytes equals a gigabyte. And finally, 1024 gigabytes equals 1 terabyte. There are other units that are much bigger, but for practical use, we typically use megabytes, gigabytes, and terabytes in schools. The history of the internet. In 1969, the first network was created called ARPANET. In 1971, the first email was sent. In 1978, the first spam message was sent. In 1987, the internet had about 30,000 hosts. In 1988, the first virus was created. In 1991, the first website was created on the World Wide Web. Its purpose? To explain the World Wide Web. In 1993, the U.S. government began to use the Internet. In 1995, the Internet experienced exponential growth due to availability of new web services that provided dial-up, such as AOL, CompuServe, and Prodigy. In 1998, Google opened its first office. In 2002, there were over 522 million people using the Internet. In 2005, YouTube was launched. Conducting effective online research requires several skills and areas of knowledge. Knowing which tools are available, how they work, and how to use them will aid you in your online research. This portion of the presentation explains several web search tools, how search engines results work, and how to use search terms most effectively. The presentation also offers strategies for what to do with online search results once um, you have them, how to evaluate sources to determine whether they are appropriate for a given project. In module two, we'll go into further processes on information fluency. Searching is a process that takes time and practice. You must define and narrow topics, identify topic concepts, generate keywords or synonyms to use in searches, devise possible searches using syntax, use more than one search tool, and evaluate results. Online research can be incredibly helpful and convenient. It can bring you large amounts of information in a very short amount of time and can often be done from the comfort of a personal computer. However, large amounts of information can be frustrating to sift through. Additionally, it is important to recognize that the internet does not contain all of the information in the world, and online search tools like search engines do not search even all the content of the internet. A wise online researcher realizes that there is potentially helpful information that is not available through search engines. Knowing the potential pitfalls of online research will also help them to develop strategies to avoid these pitfalls. 
three of the most common online search tools are search engines, web directories, and meta search engines. Of these, search engines are the most well-known term. A search engine, such as Google, consists of software that crawls the internet, storing information about websites based on keywords and other information. A user enters a keyword or search phrase into the search engine interface, and the search engine retrieves relevant results based on the entered keywords. Web directories are compilations of sites listed by topical categories. They can help a user move from a general area of interest to a more specific topic and eventually a website. A meta search engine is a search engine that searches multiple search engines. When a user types a keyword into a meta search engine, the engine lists results from many different search engines. Search engines do not necessarily list the best results first. In fact, they couldn't because different people are looking for different types of things when they enter keywords into search engines. Which pages search engines list and the order in which they are listed is based on a number of factors, including the amount of information on the site, the number of other sites that link to it, the number of people who select that link when searching, the length of time that the site has been listed in the search engine database, and the code of the site. Because each search engine is coded differently and told to follow different rules for retrieving and listing, different search engines might return different results in a different order. This is why it's often a good idea to try a search in multiple search engines. You might find something using one search engine that another one missed. Some search engines also include results that are paid advertising, so it's wise to look at the results carefully to determine which results are normal and which are paid for. Here is a revealing task about different search engines. Please do this activity with yourself. 1. Write a search topic on a piece of paper. Just a general search topic. 2. Enter the search term into three different search engines. 3. Compare and contrast the results. Are the results different? How are they different? What are the characteristics of the pages listed first by each search engine? Some potential search engines to use would be Google, Yahoo, Bing, and try this one on for size, Dogpile. I promise it's nothing bad or obscene. When conducting a search online, it pays to be creative. Before you start, you might consider brainstorming about words and phrases that could be associated with your project. You might also consider making a list of different kinds of information that might be helpful to your project. Because you will most likely find a large volume of information, it is a good idea to keep notes or bookmarks of sites that seem particularly helpful. When going through pages and pages of results, it's easy to forget which pages were the most helpful. Search engines use logic to follow search commands. There are shortcuts available to use this logic known as operators. Simple operators can force words to appear with a plus sign, exclude a word from appearing with a subtraction sign, or force a phrase to appear exactly as is using quotation marks around the term. Boolean operators are useful for tailoring search terms to get the type of results you want. These type of operators are one-word connectors that are placed between keywords or phrases in a search. Using AND will find pages that include all the search terms used. For example, Dining Hall and Student Workers will return pages that include the both phrases. Or we'll find pages that um, at least find one of the search terms. For example, dining hall or cafeteria or campus food service. Or is useful for expanding search results. Not excludes pages that include the second phrase listed. For example, Henry VII, not Shakespeare, would be useful if you wanted to find content about Henry VII, the historical king, but not the Shakespearean play. Not is useful for limiting results when there are too many. Most search engines have more advanced search options in addition to operators for advanced search options and search engines you use. 
How do you figure out who is responsible for a website or what its purpose is? Sometimes figuring these things out can be tricky because websites can be misleading about their purpose. Take several moments to carefully look at a website. Don't take what any site says at face value. Some strategies include paying attention to the tone and the kind of language used. Is it informal? Is it exaggerated or sensational? Is it written like a tabloid cover? Does the language appeal to the emotions? What kind of assumptions does the page make? Does the page make generalizations that are oversimplifying the matter? Does the page clearly explain where its information comes from? Does the site seem to be selling something? Note that there is a difference between sites that have outside advertising on them and sites whose purpose is to promote a product. Is the site trying to convince users to adopt a certain opinion? Does the site seem one-sided? Does it acknowledge other perspectives? Look for a copyright notice, usually found at the bottom of the page. Note who the copyright belongs to and do a quick search about the individual or organization. This can help you determine who is responsible for the page. What other sites does the site in question link to? Which, if any, other sources does the site reference? Do these links and sources seem to be trustworthy? Domain name extensions used to be a fairly reliable strategy for determining the credibility of a website. This is no longer the case. Anyone can register a .com, .net, .org domain name, meaning that a .org extension does not mean that the site belongs to a legitimate organization or that the information presented is guaranteed to be valid. While it's true that .edu and .gov can only be used by educational institutions or government institutions, this doesn't mean that information found at a .gov or .edu is reliable. For example, many universities offer students and faculty web space, and users may post information that is not correct. Google Advanced Search does not get enough love. It is helpful for finding resources for teachers. Try this cool hack. Let's say you have a presentation to give to your class on turtles, but you don't want to start it from scratch. Where it says file format, select only PowerPoint files. Once you search, you will only get PowerPoint files. Take a look. One of the results might be what you are looking for. Let's say you have to assign homework for math, say on area and perimeter. Type in your search and select PDF or .doc for doc. You will have a lot of resources and re results to look through. Google Scholar will allow you to search for academic materials. It strips away a lot of the commercial content. Google Scholar also provides advanced search features. At the completion of this presentation, please perform all readings and experiences um, located under resources under module one. Provide an introduction in the brief bio discussion forum. And finally, complete assignment number one, hardware, software, internet systems tasks, and submit it to Joule.